All right, welcome back to the second installment on the rifle build series. Uh, it's just got this in today and have not opened it yet, but this is the stock. So second major component of the rifle. So let's get this thing open and take a look. And we are gonna do this live. I have not looked at this. So we're gonna see how everything turned out. So this is from AG Composites. This is their Visigoth, and it is a uh, pretty good looking little stock. So uh, again, this is AG Composites Visigoth made for a, a long action. Um, it's right-handed stock. I'll tell you what else I've got set up here. Um, so it's uh, set up for a Bartline 3B contour, which should match the barrel. It's cut for BDL on the bottom. So we're gonna test fit that here in a second. Uh, this camo is called Erosion Rogue. So it's, uh, I think, a four-color camo. So it's gonna be black with uh, brown, some tan, and some green in it. So this is a, a carbon fiber stock. It's very stiff. Um, it is hard. I've got QD cups on both sides, uh, front and back. It's also got a couple of removable swivel studs up front and one on the rear. Got a decelerator rear pad here. So the reason I went with the Visigoth is it's got kind of the Monte Carlo style stock with a little bit of rise for the cheek, but it's not adjustable. And it does have a cutout for the bolts so that you can take the, uh, the bolt out of the gun without having to, uh, you know, take it out of the stock or, uh, you know, you don't need an adjustable removable cheek piece or anything like that. Um, it's also got a flat bottom on the front, so it should rest really well on um, my front rest or I tend to hunt out of blinds that have uh, good spots for a good flat rest. So not a whole lot to show you this without assembling everything, but I do want to test fit the bottom metal. Again, this thing is cut for regular Remington BDL plate. So I do happen to have my floor plate, so one second. So this is a long action floor plate. This is from Red Hawk Rifles. So that's what I'm gonna be using is their hardware. So let's see how this thing. So it does fit in there pretty well. Um, it looks like the cutout is a little large up here in the corner. Yeah, so overall, and I'll show you how this thing fits in there, let's get it good and focused. It's got a really consistent gap around the floor plate, although, like I said, it is cut a little uh, big up here in the front um, whenever this thing releases. Let's see. I don't know if that's necessary clearance um, to get this thing open. I don't think it is, but uh, otherwise, I will say it does fit very well. Like, I mean, it's it's basically a friction fit. So my my first kind of impression is it's it's a very good fit on the bottom metal, with the exception of that shoulder being a little large. But that doesn't bother me too much. Um, it could be that. Uh, there's some slight variation in the uh, the Red Hawk rifle version of the BDL plate because this cut is actually for a Remington uh, factory floor plate. So there could be a little bit of difference there, which is not their fault. It could just be that I didn't buy uh, the Remington floor plate. So it's got molded in, uh, you know, lug. It's got molded in aluminum pillars. So this thing, uh, it should be pretty much good to go. Now, a couple of other things I do want to check. Number one is weight. All right, so on the website, uh, this is listed uh, that these should come out around 28 ounces. Now, um, mine is long action, so it could weigh a little bit more, and that could also be a, a bare weight without any QD cups or, you know, buttstock. I don't know what they include on their weights, but let's see what it actually comes out as. So 30 ounces, you know, that's not bad. Two ounces, uh, you know, that's less than 10%. And again, uh, this is gonna be a little bit longer than a short action. They may have just uh, quoted the weight on a short action. Um, so again, two ounces off of the uh, the advertised weight. I don't have any trouble at all with that. So yeah, I don't really have any problem with that. You know, it's, it's under two pounds. 
um, for this stock with everything kind of good to go. Um, and, and so, you know, we'll see how that plays out with the overall rifle and where the overall rifle kind of ends up. I, my target is I, I'm hoping um, under seven pounds because you've got a couple pounds here, you've got a few pounds for the barrel, and then the receiver is also going to be a little under two pounds. Um, and then you've got all the other hardware like the floor plate and muzzle device and kind of everything else. So we'll see. I'm, I'm shooting for, again, six and a half, seven pounds altogether uh, before optic for this thing. So we'll see how that goes. Um, last thing I need to do is check the barrel fit on the channel because I don't have the receiver yet. So that's the limit of what I can do. So let me go grab the barrel. We'll see how that channel looks and just see how the barrel's going to kind of line up. Now, basically, uh, the way this thing's going to sit in there, and I, I apologize, I know without the receiver, this looks like a bit of an exercise in futility, but um, the barrel is basically going to seat against the receiver uh, right ahead of the, uh, the front lug, the recoil lug. And so there's kind of a look at how the barrel channel will fit with this barrel. And you can see, uh, you know, just a bit of a gap, like a one millimeter, uh, maybe, you know, one and a half to two millimeters, depending on where you're at along that channel. But cut pretty well, um, given that they did not have the barrel. Uh, this channel is a 3B BART line channel, and this barrel was cut uh, by Patriot Valley Arms to be a 3B, so it should line up pretty good. Um, I know that AG Composites does contact the barrel manufacturer and get kind of their dimensions to make sure everything's cut well, um, but it does look like I've got good clearance and that this thing should float in there pretty well. And overall, um, you know, if you want to start talking the overall length of the rifle, with a 20 inch barrel, it's gonna be pretty short. So I'll try to show you a little bit on the, uh, the finish uh, on this gun. Now, I did not get uh, the optional textured forend or grip and feeling this thing, I don't really think that that would have been uh, necessary. It feels like this thing, the, the paint's kind of rough and there's no um, surface coat over it. So it's just kind of paint over carbon. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see a little bit of the uh, the carbon fiber weave coming through on the black because I think the black is just kind of a, a raw carbon finish. And then it's three colors of paint uh, over that. So I'll show you down here. So on the erosion paint jobs, again, it, the paint is just the color and the black underneath is just kind of the raw carbon. Um, but you can't really see it too much you, you do have to look very close to see uh, that fiber you know underneath on the black uh, the interior um, is a very very hard I, I guess that's some sort of like epoxy foam or something you can see there's the routing job on the inside again everything looks really good um, pretty good machine work on cutting that stuff there again uh, front in focus uh, rear pillar there uh, you know on the underneath again there's your rear pillar front pillar so everything is is very nice um, on this around the uh, the QD cups again everything looks uh, very well finished I haven't seen any issues at all QD cup here there's a little bit of paint but Otherwise, um, these flush cups all look pretty good. Now, these on the front, this one on the right, is sticking out just a touch there on the bottom. So yeah, if I had any nitpick, that would this uh, flush cup there is ever so slightly sticking out. You can just barely see it, but now it's it's real small. Um, I don't have any real real issue with that. These things are, I believe, molded in. One thing people may be curious about with the uh, the Visigoth is kind of what it looks like next to some other stocks. So I've got just three different stocks just to give you kind of a quick comparison to some other stuff that's out there just in case anybody's kind of wondering what this 
ends up looking like. So at the top here, um, this is a Christensen Arms. Now this is a short action rifle, but uh, this is a ridge line and this is the base stock that it comes with. And then down here at the bottom, this is a Tika CTR stock. So the Tika actions are more like a long action stock. Um, so the Visigoth, uh, you know, this stock is going to have a flat forend, whereas, um, you know, a lot of hunting stocks are going to have a rounded forend, and so it's going to have more of kind of a target style flat front end. Um, other features, it's got more of a vertical grip, more like a target style rifle, and it's got a, a really good kind of bulge around that the hand uh, to give you a good fit to your palm. Um, other things, it's a Monte Carlo style stock, so a regular sporter stock, you just kind of have this kind of kick um, out the top. It's just kind of a straight angle coming up, whereas this has a higher cheek weld um, and then a little bit of cutout back here. Um, it's similar to like having a riser on your stock, but it's built in. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much going to be a very similar pull length overall. Um, and again, it's carbon fiber. The, uh, the Christensen Arms is also carbon fiber. This TK, this is just a polymer stock. I believe they use polypropylene uh, for their stocks. But, you know, just in case you're kind of curious, there they are kind of lined up against each other so you can see a bit of the geometry that they're bringing. Um, the other thing is it's going to have a wider front end than is typical for a lot of stocks. So the front end here is going to be a little wider. Now, it, that width is not going to be crazy, but you can kind of visually see it. And I'll show you the difference with a tape here. Um, at the front on this Tika stock, that nose is under one and a half inches. So the nose over here is closer to like one and three quarter on the Visigoth. And as you come down, the Tika really, I mean, it's kind of max is about one and a half down here. Whereas this thing is closer to two inches wide. Um, at its widest here by that front lug. Um, and so it is going to be a bit wider than your typical stock from most manufacturers. So I'll also show you this Christensen arm stock is very narrow at the front. That thing measures about an inch and a quarter at the front, and it only gets up to about an inch and a half uh, here toward the front lug. So very narrow on the uh, the sporter style Christensen arm stock. And so that's where like some of the weight um, on this Visigoth is not really that bad because you are kind of getting a wider stock. And, you know, a lot of people, there's a trade-off. Um, the flat front end is better off of a rest. Um, a lot of people like the rounded forend if you're freehand shooting, which some people, depending on, you know, what type of hunting you do, if you're doing more of a, a stock style hunting where you are going to be doing more offhand shooting, people will find that that rounded forend may be more comfortable. Where I hunt, I really do more fixed position hunting where I typically always have a rest. Um, and, and so for me, the, the flat fore end is really, you know, what I wanted and where I wanted to be. But that's just something to keep in mind with this style of stock. You know, what you want, uh, they can make different things. They've got a lot of different stock styles. But uh, compared to a normal sporter, again, it's going to have a wider front end, a more vertical grip here. It's got the flat bottom fore end. So, you know, it's going to have a little bit more rise here because that Monte Carlo style back end, it's got a fatter you know, more vertical foregrip there compared to a sporter style stock. And it's a bit of a blend between a traditional hunting style stock and something that's a bit more target oriented. Um, now, you know, the, the Tika CTR stock, even though it's a tactical rifle stock, really the difference between this and their normal stocks is not huge. It does have a bit of a flatter bottom compared to the um, the Christensen Arms Ridgeline stock, and it has a bit more of a, a vertical grip, but still not um, that straight. Uh, and it does have the cheek riser, but otherwise it's very similar. The Tika stocks, I believe, are modular for the most part. But anyway, um, that's just a, a quick overview of these three stocks. So you can kind of position where this Visigoth kind of sits compared to your traditional sporter stocks and stuff like that. Um, with that, I think that's going to be it. I know, you know, uh, not a lot I can say just yet. Without the receiver, um, there's only so much I can do. But I did want to just give a quick look at this thing. Um, in case anybody's shopping around and you see those AG Composites uh, stocks, you know, I, I really, really 
you know, my first impression is, is pretty good. Um, feels very comfortable to hold. It's pretty lightweight. Um, I like the grip angle, the flat bottom um, on the forend. You know, it seems to have just the right amount of cheek rise there um, and everything looks cut very well um, so far. The stuff that I can test fit fits really, really well. So in a couple weeks, I should be getting the receiver uh, based on the timeline that I was told. And you know, I mean, something to keep in mind, I mentioned it with the barrel. I ordered this stuff like all mid late December and here we are early May. I just got the stock and I'm still probably at least a week or two away from getting the receiver in. It just takes forever to get stuff done. But um, once I get that receiver, we'll be able to really do some stuff because I've got everything else in at this point. So with that, that'll be it for this video. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks.